Hello and welcome to our first podcast of the school year, 2016-17. Welcome back, everyone. It's good to be back uh, with my uh, good partner, Ryan, here. Yeah, yeah. Good, to, good to be back. I feel like uh, we this needed to be brought back to the, our, our yep. tech cast, and so I'm glad we're able to, to get that back going again. I think it'll, be, I think it'll do a lot of good for, for staff that, that tune in and get, get some tips on, on what's going on in, in the technology world and, and just what, we, what we've got going on, especially now at the beginning of the school year. Right, yeah, we've had a lot of new stuff this year. We had some major changes with our email and some different things, and we think that this format works really good for having quick conversations. We're going to try, uh, try and, like uh, Ryan said, resurrect our podcast from a few years ago. Well, we've been doing it on and off for a few years. And yeah. I think that uh, um, I'd like to keep it the conversational format. I think a lot of podcasts are kind of like that. Uh -huh. um, I think uh, that it's more authentic. We're going to probably stumble around and hee-haw a little bit as little bit. we talk about some stuff, but I want it like the conversation. I, I think that, yep, I think that uh, is just definitely the most natural and, and uh, the most relatable, for sure. Yep. yep. So sometimes we'll be kind of feel like we're talking to the camera and sometimes we'll be talking to each other yep. or whatever. And uh, we're basically just kind of going to review the hot topics of the week that are going on in the district and maybe once in a while uh, out there in the tech world. Yep. As well as... Uh, we might bring you some, uh, with any luck, bring you some feature stories of what others are doing. Yep. And also, I mean, if if you guys out there that are watching us, if you feel like there's a topic that you really like us to address, um, I think, you know, shooting us an email or, or anything like with, um, either Lance.Swanson at SSCCards.org or Ryan.Moore at SSCCards.org, um, just because we want to hear what you think we should be discussing as well, you know, and so we can go over some of that stuff. So, um so yeah, I, I think just between what we come up with and and then what you guys are able to, or what you guys want to want to see, I think we can yep. have a nice little program. So, so yeah, let's just get right to some of the hot things that we're dealing with. Uh, and I think um, the first thing on our list, and you probably get tired of hearing about it, but it's something that still fixes about six out of ten problems, and that's just a plain old reboot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you'd be surprised. I, I mean. That, that does solve so many of you know potential yeah. issues and so um, it, it's a it's such a small thing that you that you might not think why well, I don't need to do that because you know I yeah. and my computer is running fine and you know why do I need to why do I need to do do that and but it it will solve several of your issues yeah. so and the, and to be honest with you it's amazing you think you just, I just restarted it, or I just had it, right. on a, but maybe it was just mm -hmm. asleep, or maybe there was a big update this morning when you first opened it up on the school network, it applied it, and then it's kind of out to launch, and blah, yep. blah, blah, so make sure that um, you've done that reboot um, before you panic. Yep. I mean, it's the same thing with your portable and mobile devices. If you have a cell phone, and you're just checking email in the background, or a lot of things, a lot of times we find a lot of uh, memory-intensive games still running in yep. the background, and a simple reboot will just bring it back. Yep. Uh, and not a simple, I mean, not just clicking it on and off, which is just kind of asleep. You need to really hold down the power button and then totally power. Right, because I've, I've found that, yeah, with my phone, too, where it's it's rare, but there are times where my phone will just, like, freeze, and I'm, instead of, you know, panicking and maybe going, yep. you know, i got to go and get this fixed, you know. You just hold down the power button, right. have it shut all the way down, and then yeah, just like just like this, I would say six out of ten or even more. So when you turn it back on, oh, it's it's yeah, fine, with it's the working. Phone, that's yep. probably closer to nine. Out of 10. <laughs> nine out of ten, yeah. And we've done a lot of updates to, um, on the network computers. So your computer gets if it's been home with you or been in the closet or in this bag for a lot of the summer, or mm -hmm. maybe turn it on a little bit here or there, it just boom. All those updates that it missed out on, it's going to be kind of bogged down doing that. Right. So don't panic. Let it work through it, and then let it reboot or reboot your. You force a reboot if you need to. Yep. And it's worth it. And most of them, you just hold the power down, button down for about ten seconds. You can force it to to restart if it's right. really like. Yeah, if it's really yeah. Uh, the other thing is if um, if your computer is getting, it might have started an update and then the update gets hung up. And um, sometimes it's, that happens because the time's off. So if the time is more than seven minutes off ahead or behind, that update won't go through too a lot. Right. So 
check that if you're having trouble too. Yep. So again, just it's it's nice to be able to have some uh, self uh, self awareness things of how to potentially fix yeah. issues, you know, between rebooting and um, that way, you know, it, it just it just can make it a lot easier if you if you can look out for those things. Last spring we reset everybody's passwords, you know, right before everybody left for the summer. And then um, that's a combination of your uh, last name and then the uh, ID badge right. number. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you don't like that one and you want to re you change your password to whatever you want, you can. You just control or delete on your, on your keyboard and then choose change password. Then you just have to remember to change it in your phone and stuff too. Right. Um, but uh, you must be in the district to do the change password on your laptop or you're, you're going to have a, a problem. It right. needs to be within our network, not at home or at the coffee shop or wherever. Yep, yep, got to be, uh, be in the district. Yep, so um, if you're having trouble with some of these things and the reboot doesn't fix it, obviously you need to do a um, work order or a school dude a lot of times, and that's really the best way for us to get that. I know we keep hitting this home, it gets kind of a broken record, but it really right. is the, that way we're giving it to the best person for that job and the person that can get there the quickest. Right. Otherwise, yep. you could be emailing directly the wrong person. They might be in the middle of something else. They might be off for the day. They might be yeah. Lord knows you know, <laughs> yeah. what. Yep. And uh, school dude just will automatically get it to the person that it's has the most available time or already in your area or whatever. Right. I mean, just for approximation and for expertise, like you said, you know, somebody, you're going to get the best person more than likely on that particular job. And especially, at the, I mean, we want you to use school dude all the time, but especially the beginning of the year where things are just kind of crazy and, yep. you know, you've got a million different things going on, as, as teachers do as well and staff. I, and so just for organization's sake, so we can all just kind of keep our sanity a little bit, yep. it's nice to have that documentation of what's, of what's going on with, and that's where school dude is just a huge benefit. And then if we get a lot of the same problem, that, that information tells us something more important right. too, like where yep. we need to provide training or where we've got a real problem. All yep. that data is really helpful to us and um, as well as getting you the best service we can provide. Yep. So that's good. Thank you. Um, the Gmail uh, pa or our Google account and the passwords and everything, I think everybody should be in by now. If they're not, once again, we need to know right away and help you out. Um, like most staff, we just took a short history of your email over. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's still over in Outlook. Um, if you were here last year or you've been here for several years, you might have kept a lot of email in there. And that was fine. It still is fine to leave it in there. I don't see any reason to really transfer it over. No. Nope. Um, it's just going to fill up and clog up your current one. But if you really need to, you certainly could do. Could we could help you with some of that? But for the most part, I think I just leave that archived in Outlook, and, and for the foreseeable future, we're going to keep that running. Right. Yep. And so. I think I know I'm one. I didn't move it much over at all, and. Uh, it's been great. It's been nice to kind of have a fresh, cleaner start. Yeah. And if I want anything, I just go grab it and copy and paste it right. out of there. Just copy what I need from an old email, paste it in a new one, and change what I need to and rock on. Yep. And that, that seems to work really well. And like I said, there's no need for, you know, if you feel like you have an old email, well, you know, how long is this going to be around? You know, it's for, for a while yet. Yeah. So we, we've got time. Um, most of this year, and I mean, the problem is, is we can't see what Microsoft's going to charge us just to leave it kind of archived. Right. Yeah. But so. I don't see it to be a huge problem uh, to keep it for a few years. Yep. And uh, keep it running the best we can. One of the things that um, uh, I was surprised at is how little I've gone back. Yeah, same here. I thought, oh, yeah. I need this stuff. No, right. No. Yeah, no. no I, I'm the same way where I've. I've pretty much been able to stay in Google, and I, I mean, I had some stuff that I transferred over, but for the most part, I've been in good shape there. Excellent. So keep that in mind is to bring up Outlook and copy and paste it. And, uh, that should work pretty good. Uh, the, the Tech PLC on the August 29th is going to be all about more about this email and some tips and trips, and we're going to try and do it in a format that's 
it's helpful tips and stuff like that, but more of a, like a workshop where you can actually maybe get some things set up and change some things if you want to. Um, and for the most part across the district, that's what we're going to do. At the high school, we're trying to bring in the new Canvas product, mm -hmm. and so I think we'll probably do kind of a half of them go to Canvas, half of them go to the email workshop or the Google workshop, right? And then we'll flip. So we'll just do like fifteen or twenty minutes there, and then fifteen and or twenty minutes. Then we'll switch fifteen twenty minutes, and then there'll be a little time left over to hopefully for if we run over or if there's work to do. In your right. System. Yep. And I mean, what you'll find at this at the Tech PLC, especially with with Google, is um, I think maybe it can be a little bit overwhelming because it's a new. Uh, email that we're using this year instead of the Outlook, and so there might be some confusion. But once you really get into Google and to Gmail, and you get used to using that, you'll really discover that it, in a lot of ways, it it kind of outdoes Outlook, and is is just a lot more, I would say, user friendly. Right. So I, I'm not going to lie to you. There's some things I really miss from Outlook. There's probably a bucket over here of some things. Mm -hmm. I have a basket of some stuff I liked over here in Outlook. But there's a barrel of stuff I love in Google. Yep. And um, I miss some of those things. But short term, I kind of get mad and frustrated. I'm not mad, but I get frustrated like, oh, I wish I had this or I wish this was there. And But I'm just thinking short term. And I haven't even educated myself yet. And then I feel silly once I see that it's just a change of thinking. It's right. just a whole new. And so a lot of times until you use it and get your head around it and use it, then you start to see the light, like, oh, I was silly. I was closed-minded. I was thinking short. Right. Yeah. And then I start to see those bigger thinking differently. Yep. Yep. And so, so, so hopefully, you know, at that tech PLC, that if you guys are having some uh, uncomfortability with with Gmail, this kind of helps ease your ease your fears a little bit because it really is uh, it's pretty user friendly. Yeah, I think it's going to be worth it in the long run. And um, certainly it's nice having everybody on the same page. There. Yep. Um, so uh, if your if the usernames and passwords, for uh, we're still seeing a lot of that with uh, students in Google. And if you're at the high school or middle school, some of those get sent to the help desk. Yep. Um, but most of them, uh, you know the format that they're in. And uh, they could maybe just have the kids try that when they're at their desk. And it's their um, cards and their lunch pin. Right. Are the passwords? Yep, that we're trying to stick to, and it's a capital C, and then lowercase a r d s, and then their their lunch pen. So, so capital C on the cards, and then the lunch pen. Yep, and, and then I believe they could should be able to see if they have a classroom full of kids and want another lunch pen. Can't they see that in their grade book? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They can pull that up. So, so that should be. They shouldn't even need to really send them the help desk or make a call, but certainly we're there to help. Them yep, absolutely. And I know I've. I've gotten some requests at, at the middle school help desk, and this is totally understandable, with, especially at the beginning of the year with a lot of new new students that are, you know, maybe don't have a, an account, or they came after we had, you know, added all the names into yeah. Active Directory, and so that's yeah, that's no problem at all for me to to add those, and then um, I, I just think as as we get past this initial rush, you know, this first couple of weeks, like we talked about, um, I think it'll we'll, we'll start settling with some of those passwords and things, so. Yeah, and I think Ryan and I even talked some more tomorrow. We're always trying to find a way to to be more proactive on that yep. and to look for, like, can we run a report and see what new students come in the district and try and be in front to, of that. And it yep. seems like we, we're always trying to get better at it, but there's always going to be stuff we miss and things come up, and I appreciate everybody's patience as we yep. work through that and, and get it handled. Absolutely. So thank you, Ryan. Um, I think with... Uh, most everybody should be logged into the Power School in their grade book and gotten some training, but if they yep. haven't, they need to do a work order real quick or get a hold of uh, the help desk or get a hold of um, someone in the data team to help yep. them out there. Yep. I know um, with grade book, uh, there's been um, a few requests where um, you go to click on grade book and it won't necessarily, it maybe won't up, it'll, it'll or maybe give an error message saying an unknown error has occurred. And that looks scary, but all of that really is if you if you want if you don't feel comfortable going through this process, if you want to bring it down to us at the help desk, it's basically just a matter of um, uninstalling Gradebook and then reinstalling it back out. And so, and we're happy to be able to, to be able to help with that. And once it's reinstalled, then um, 
I don't know if it's an update or whatever that it needed. And yeah. and so just adding, just reinstalling it then has solved the majority of those right. issues. And I think some of those Java, there was and some Java, Java yep, yep. where um, you really needed to go ahead and upgrade the Java. Right. And, and a lot of people were still scared because there was a time years ago when you didn't want to do the upgrade to Java because right. it messed up our school. But now it's kind of the opposite. It really needs it. So. Yeah. And there were some that were trying to do Windows updates and trying to do the Java updates, and I think they were hung up. And once again, that reboot they were talking yep. about yep. fixes where, a lot of those things. Yep. Right there. Absolutely. So those are some of the the potential work workarounds for the, the if there if you have any issues with Gradebook. For the high school team and any any of the other ones that um, are using Canvas, although I think the high school is a little bit further along, but there are some other pockets of folks using Canvas, which is great and fine. Um, there are a phone number that, that um, you can call yep. to get support and uh, and we pay for that and there's a direct it's just a number just for our district uh, to get help on that and they are great uh, yeah been paid so far yep and that number is 844-611-2447 and um, I'll we'll put that on the screen there hopefully with magic yep. with magic yeah that's <laughs> and, what it is <laughs> and then uh, we have there's an online chat available too in canvas and it's been pretty good although they're usually um, someone that's chatting with several people at the same time so uh, just be patient but the but we found that the, and I was just talking to Dan about that this morning that the answer they do come back with is really absolutely accurate yeah it's been perfect and spot on almost every time um, so it's maybe not, boom, you get it just instantaneously, but give it a right. couple minutes or whatever because hey. they're working through, and, and that's that time of year too. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, and what you, the, just the couple minute delay, but you, like like you said, the information you're getting though is going to be right. 100%, you, you know, very accurate. And, and then you if know. you have a classroom full of students and they're trying to get them in there and um, they're putting that sscardinals.instructure.com forward slash login yep. canvas. Yep. But they're getting some of that spelled wrong or the dot in the wrong place. Or right. The structure is wrong. We uh, we found run into that. Most of you have probably worked through that already, but I think Ryan. Yeah, I, I've seen a little bit of that. Um, not so much teachers. It seems like the teachers have the SSC Cardinals dot infrastructure dot com and then that link. But I think there was some confusion early on. Where it was okay. Well, the students just have to use infrastructure and not the SSC oh, Cardinals. Yeah. But the students and the staff both use the same link. And um, we, uh, I sent that out. I know to the high school, um, and I can send it out to others as well if, if needed. Um, and we also put um, the link for the students and the staff. It's under students on the SSC website. Um, if you go to for our students, it's the second link under for our students. It's the Canvas sign-in, and that's for both staff and students to to use that link. Perfect. Yeah, that if they if you don't have to write that up and you run the risk of one little typo and it's not going right. to work. Nope. And if you yep. can just click on it, and we all know that it works the best. So yeah. Thanks, yep. Ryan. That's great. And so uh, once again, if you uh, need some help there, um, reach out to the help desk or. Um, do a school dude. Yep, absolutely. Or, or more importantly, if, if it's just Canvas alone, um, once I think the best line of the support is the uh, direct line. Going right to the direct line, yep. All right, thanks a lot. Um, the next thing we want to hit real quick before we start to wrap up here is the teacher computer rotations. Um, a lot of people have contacted us. They said, my computer is super old, and you know, yeah. I've had this for four or five years, and we get a lot of that, and we look into it, and it's you know, it's been three years or getting close to three years or, you know, it always seems like yeah. technology moves so fast it feels older right. than it is. And so sometimes it might just need to be, you know, uh, cleaned up or yeah. looked at or whatever. And so that's where you want to do a work order or bring it to the help desk or whatever and um, schedule a time for it to get, you know, kind of gone over and make sure it's good and good. Right. The other thing is, is if... If the teacher rotations, so most teacher computers, we give them a new one every three years, but sometimes it's not, boom, that's three years today. It's yeah. No, it's yep. somewhere in that third year we'll probably replace it out. And so um, please try and, be, try and be patient with us. It's, it's hard to get to everybody in the same same. The same, yeah, yeah. And then just with the wave of stuff going on, too, it's just right. like that can um, 
But that doesn't mean sit there with a broken computer. Right. Yeah. Just, uh, reach out to us if it's if it's having trouble with it, and um, we can usually a lot of most every time fix it. And um, you know maybe it needs more memory, or maybe the hard drive is corrupt, or yeah. who knows what could be wrong with it. And we need to know that. So if we don't know, we don't know. Yep. So yeah, please uh, please know that um, we're gonna rotate it out for you, and we'll get you taken care of. Now if if you some teachers have begged and. Uh, almost uh, hidden their old one. They don't want to give up their old computer right. in their classroom. And then the deal is, though, is that on that old one, once it's over three years old, it's kind of comes to a different level of support. So we're not going to come there with the red lights flashing yep. and fix that one. We'll do our best to keep it going, and we'll come there. And this time of year, it's really frustrating when we go to a classroom. It's been an emergency. I can't do any grade book. I'm locked out, whatever. It's like and we get there, and they're still using the six- or seven-year-old yeah. computer. The new one's sitting there or folded up or in the bag or in the closet or whatever or and, working. Right. And, and just wanted it going on this other one that I use up here with a projector or whatever, which is fine. I love that. So that's a good deal. Right. But, but let's not ruin it because... You know, that's not like emergency account, yeah. you know. It's a big deal. We want to fix it. We're not saying we're not going to fix it. It's right. Just, it's just not. We've got some other people that are totally down. Yeah. And that's yep. outgrown. So that's kind of the way we uh, treat those older ones, and I think that's just fair. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. so um, most buildings got new copiers uh, over the summer, the main bigger copiers. Mm -hmm. And I think most of them are set up to scan. They're hooked up to the network. Um, through LDAP, and that allows it that you can go in there to the address book and see pretty much everybody in the district, I believe, yep. and click on their name, and it just put the stuff on the thing and scan it right to your email address. And without having to type in a lot of stuff, and it should keep up to date as well as whenever we get new people. Um, so that's really the best way to do that. Um, a lot of times it's really great to go, when you need to print something, we hope you're not printing. Right, you yeah, ideally, yeah. But when you do need to print something, it's really most cost effective to print to a copy to a machine. Copier. Yep. Rather than go print off a copy, a master copy, then take it to the copy machine. Mm -hmm. You're losing some quality there too. Right, yeah. But most importantly, you can write from your screen, usually pick, I want it to be stapled, I want it to sort it or whatever. Um, the features that the, the, the copier might have, you yep. can choose that in your print job. And then, but the bummer is, is this: if you print thirty copies the first go around, and you realize there was a typo or something wrong, you just wasted thirty. Thirty, yeah. So it's really important to maybe just still print one, check it over, proof it, right, and, and then, then do your thirty. Yep. But you know, but anytime we're using the copier, it's cheaper than a printer. I right. just want to get. Make sure that's clear. And the philosophy of any of the districts out there that I deal with, or I'm aware of, is there is not personal printers in every classroom. No. You know, yeah. and this cost this is not cost effective. Right. And it's, we're just not headed in a print everything world. Either. Yep. Yep. That that's definitely where we're headed. Is is uh, ideally paperless altogether, right. yeah. but um, but yeah, definitely not. Where all printers are in the same, or are and folks, we've made a class. difference. Um, yeah. uh, Rick Photo has informed me that we've, all, you know, we ordered less paper than we ever had, mm -hmm. and so that's a good sign. That means yep. we're using less paper as a district. We want to continue that trend, and I think it's more than just to save paper. It's actually more collaborative and more efficient. And yep. Students are more engaged and more empowered, and that's what it's about, right? Yep. Absolutely. So anyway, that. That's kind of the story in the copiers. I think we've gotten to most locations, and hopefully you have a couple choices to print from. If not, we need to know. Is that something emergency that we're going to take care of right away? No, probably not, but we right. need to know it. But it's, yep. And then we'll take care of it. So, um, SharePoint is a, was a nice resource, and it was really handy. And uh, now that we're full-fledged into um, Google, mm -hmm. and um, we've spent quite a few bit of our PLC time and other time training on it and working with it. Yep. And the usage is just through the roof. It's wonderful. But SharePoint, um, there's still some folks that have a few files in SharePoint, and we've kind of tagged August 2016 as our end of life on that SharePoint server. So um, if you have stuff in SharePoint yet, you need to look to get it off of there, get it moved over to Google or some other location. 
Yep. And um, if you need help with that, please, once again, do a work order or a school do it on that, and we'll help you. But we need to get that shut down because it's about ready to die. Yeah, it's on its, <laughs> on its last leg. Yeah. Yep. And I don't want to hear some sad stories. Right, <laughs> yep. And then um, to wrap up today, I think that uh, most of you should be getting an email from our Safe Schools training, which is the online, you watch the little video about different things like bloodborne pathogens yep. or slips and falls and yep. I know, uh, man, man safety, man safety yep. and stuff like that if you drive yep. kids around. Um, there's different people have different things depending on their level right uh, but it's important that you um, watch those and if you have trouble let us know but one thing that's a little tip when you go to log into that um, it's just your first name that last name right you don't need the whole email if you try to put the whole email on your username it's not going to work right yep so just that might help you out if you're having trouble with that and it's like it's the one from the accounting system i believe so like if you were you will go by the name Bill, but your name in the accounting system is William. Uh -huh. You might need to use the William. Yep. But a lot of times, if you just click the link that's in your, it'll take you right there. Right. Yeah, that's what I've, that's what I've discovered right. and found, just, yeah. Just uh, remember, folks, I think the first one of those are due here. It's not for a month or two, but I the think earlier so. the better. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Anything else this week? I think, uh, I think we've got it covered. Again, um, just feel free to either... You know, there's there's a lot of different ways to get a hold of us between yep. uh, school dude and and our email and uh, and at the help desk is we've got the high school help desk and the middle school help desk and so you know feel free to, to stop there as well and and uh, you know our goal is just to try to provide you guys with as much support as we possibly can and uh, beginning of the year that that can be kind of tough so we just. We appreciate your patience when you know if we if we're not able to get to your issue right away we're we're it's definitely on our on our radar yep. and we're gonna go we're gonna get we're gonna take care of it but it's just we might have something that's a little more pressing and a little more uh urgent at that time yep. so um it's kind of a pyramid you know we're gonna start with the things and our efforts and our focus from a department are gonna be like is the network up right if the network's down it's all hands on deck we gotta get the network back up yep and that's affecting everyone and then we go to things like, is it a system? Is it like one and neutral system, like the email system or the power school, or is it Canvas or, you know, one of those things is going to affect a lot of people. So right. we're going to, we probably are dealing with that before we're dealing with it, uh, fixing someone's mouse. Or yeah. An individual computer or teacher problem. And so I think everybody understands that. Yep, I think I just, so. It's nice to talk about it. Yep. Refreshing and refreshing. Yep. So well, customer service is what we want to help everybody, but sometimes it's systematic too. We can't do at all. Right. So yep. And once again, that's where that school dude really uh, comes in handy for us because yep. it gives us a, a working agenda, pretty much, of what we want to take care of and what we want to knock out. So. And then we can knock out if we have to roll a van to another part of town. Yep. We can fix two or three, four things in one thing. One. And we're not spending all day just driving around. Exactly. Yep. All right. I appreciate. Uh, a great help and support the school year already, and we look forward to uh, some more podcasts. Absolutely. All yep. right, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks.